What's your idea of a moon mission for Cardano? Like, what kind of user yeah, yeah, rate yeah. or, like, I mean, there's the population of Ethiopia is 100 million. Uh, yeah. I, I know it's hard to do back-of-the-envelope calculations for something that's so in the in the beginning stages of technology but like what what's your what's your vision what how many people do yeah. you see adopting this and yeah what do you think it can do um i really do think the sky's the limit here uh i get really really excited by conversations about low orbit satellites uh, i think that that can be an absolute game changer you know my moon mission if you could see a world maybe in sort of five or six year time five or six years time where you have low cost uh, satellite receiver chips built into smartphones and uh, you have low orbit satellites which can do a global payment network for Cardano. I think that that's where stuff gets really exciting. Instantaneous free uh, transfers and transactions across anywhere in the continent or anywhere in the world. I think that's the, that's the point where you're like, okay, well, we've done something very special here. So that question kind of leads into what is the long-term strategy? It kind of answers what is the long-term strategy. But uh, is, or can you give us any insight on any, any more details about the long-term strategy for yeah. IOHK in Africa? Yeah, absolutely. So um, next year for me is about community outreach. Uh, some of the stuff that we discussed, finding the volunteers, finding people who can be great representatives of Cardano in each of their local countries. It's about training. This is the Haskell training course to be able to actually hire developers in each of these countries. It's about key flagship projects. Um, I've got a few lined up, which I think will be quite exciting, which will really prove the value of the technology to both governments um, and uh, and people within the community. So I think that that's really what next year is about. Um, if we do that well, then I think that we'll see a huge, 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 huge uptake of the technology um, just naturally from people who have businesses and who see the value and want to implement it into their own products. Wow, that's brilliant. So basically get the software engineers trained on how to implement the software. It'll be in the, you know, their, their own code customized for the business cases in the yeah. countries, local to Africa. And once they get the software up and running, then they'll start getting the technology out to the coffee farmers. Then we'll get the uh, maybe land surveyors and it will cause, it sounds like it'll cause an expanding in business as businesses can use that technology. They're going to need people to actually collect the data and put it into that ecosystem. So, I mean, long term, this is many, many years out that, that, things are going to continue to grow on the Cardano technologies, basically. Is that about right? Absolutely. You know, the way I sort of see my job is just sort of accelerating the curve. I hope that this stuff would happen anyway. I hope that uh, in three or four years, if a government decides that it wants to do a digital land registry, they'll just be able to go online and find the tools that we've gone and built and be able to implement it themselves. At this stage, though, it's, it's much more involved. I have to go and speak to governments. I have to educate them about what we can do we have the solutions uh, but if we're doing our job right then we shouldn't have to do that going forward that we'll just create the resources and create the tools for people to be able to go and leverage this themselves without me having to, to get involved this sounds like a lot of work is it just you doing this by yourself or you got other people helping you with all this um yeah, well it's 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 just me um <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know uh we're going to be hiring some some additional roles in this space uh, over the next year. Um, but, you know, you can do a lot of the conversations and you can set up a lot of opportunities where you have to really start hiring staff and where things get um, a bit heavier is on the implementation side. Right. If we're going to go and uh, implement a supply chain solution for clearing customs for the World Food Programme, then we're going to need to have people on the ground who can go and do the training and explain to people how they can use this piece of technology. Um, so yeah, I could see us having to hire more when we get into the implementation stage of some of the projects. Uh, yeah, so so I want to say, so I guess there's there's you're saying there's two steps, right? One of them is kind of having the discussions, getting to know the people and all the various governments and different companies. And then the second step is getting, convincing them to actually build something, right? Mm. So you're saying for this year, you're in the conversation stage. And next year, you're going to be focusing on the groundwork to build up the conversation to maybe end of next year or, or the year after I get to the building stage. Is that kind of what you're saying or? 
Yeah, so this year really has been about creating a, a flow of opportunities and that flow is absolutely humongous. So now that we've sort of validated that there is an appetite for the services that IOHK can build, we need to move into actually executing and implementing. So I've got some top picks, which next year um, we're, we're going to be working on and building. But I wouldn't say two or three out, years out for the actual execution uh, we're looking at next year. That's great. That's great. Um, so as far as execution, who are you most excited to work with? Is it the governments? Is it NGOs? Is it small businesses? Is it individual people? Who are you, who are you most excited to speak to and cultivate relationships with? Uh, you know, you get different things from different people. Uh, for instance, government contracts could be uh, really prestigious for the project and they bring a lot of cachet there. Um, but they also introduce new problems. Working with governments can sometimes be a lengthy process and it can introduce new complexities. Uh, NGOs often have the same, the same issues. They can be quite slow and unwieldy. Uh, but if I had to sort of say, who am I really excited by that I've been talking to currently? I think that the, actually the World Food Program have really got their stuff together. Uh, so I'll just go back to what I was saying. Yeah, I think that the World Food Program have been, um, have been really, really on top of it. They had a very clear project proposal, a uh, very clear idea of what they wanted to do. Uh, so we're in talks with them. Um, yeah, 